Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they are growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. My guest today is Sarah Smith, founder of Rappoli and headquartered on Maui. Welcome, Sarah. Hello. Um, so I'd love to have you start off with, um, you know, sharing your story. How did, how did you get started? Right, right. I would say it was really born out of a pain point for me. It was a time in my life where all my friends and I are getting married, we're having kids every weekend, wedding showers, baby luau's, weddings, and there's all this wrapping paper at the end. And I felt really burdened because the recycling centers wouldn't accept it. So I'm like that crazy lady at the end of the party, like smoothing it out rolling it up, trying to like sell it to people like, here, can you use this? Or like the old gift bags. And it just got overwhelming. Like <laughs> I have baskets full of them in the house. And finally, my husband was like, listen, it's me or all this old wrapping paper. Like, what are you ever going to do with it? But yeah, like the recycling centers wouldn't take it. And I just, I mean, I still probably have some of it like shoved under a bed somewhere. Wait, so how did, so the recycling centers wouldn't take it? Most people don't realize that wrapping right. paper is not recyclable. And mm -hmm. why, why is that? Yeah, so conventional gift wrap, you know, has that lovely gloss, glossiness to it. That's actually a plastic coating. Um, a lot of them now, to be attractive to the eye, have like foils and tinsels and bits of glitter and all sorts of weird stuff added to it. Um, so basically, when you recycle a piece of paper, you want to be able to like pulp it down and reform it into paper, but all those metallics and plasticine coatings and such make it really hard. They really have to like beat that paper fiber down to get anything useful back out of it to the point where it's not worth it, yeah. basically. Yeah, some of that paper, you can't even tear it. It's like actual <laughs> plastic, right, like right. you have to cut it with right. scissors. Oh, that's, yeah, and that yeah. kind of kills me inside a little bit. <laughs> okay, so you were saving so. all the wrapping paper. It was mm -hmm. filling up your home. Filling, yes. Yes, this is true. You could get through aisles in your living room. Yeah. Your husband's like, no. it's either me or the wrapping paper. Okay, yes. so then what happened? So basically, I, um, I just was like, why aren't we using our neighborhood newspaper presses? They're in every town in America. And, you know, we all know they're printing less papers as more and more people read their news online. And so I saw this, like, whole model where, you know, we could print great patterns, run them on the newspaper and, you know, have this really low carbon footprint. Um, and then at the end of the party, you know, your, news, your used gift wrap can go into the recycle bin with your newspapers. Uh, it could be composted. It's like a biodegradable rock star. Um, it does get thrown out. Um, and then other things too, like I live in Kula at Elevation on Maui, so we have a fireplace. So like, you know, you're not supposed to burn conventional gift wrap because of all those plastics and metals. It actually can be toxic. So, but rapidly you can use as a fire starter. That's awesome. Yeah. I think we have some video on the whole big machinery making, yes, yeah. making the newspaper. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'd love to like kind of see how the, how the, how the sure. newspaper is being made and uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, how the wrapping paper is being made. So this, this was, is what's going on here. So this was my... Early print run, this is at a press um, right here on Oahu, and um, it's a very old newspaper press. And these were my early days of Rapoli where I was really learning how to basically teach an old dog new tricks is what I would say. I mean, these presses are like old, they print like newspaper inserts, you know, they're not like, you know, like the color registration is maybe not so accurate mm -hmm. and this and that. And I... Um, I had a very expensive education and like every time I printed, I learned a very expensive mistake. It was a good education. Um, but yeah, so this is my early press. Um, yeah, okay. right on Oahu. So, okay, so you have this idea like, hey, we've got this like recyclable newspaper. And how many times can newspaper be pulped right. up yeah. and recycled? Right. So they, uh, um, statistics say that a piece of newsprint can be recycled up to seven times. And that's because... The fiber stays nice and intact. It doesn't get the glossy coating, so they don't have to beat it up to try to recycle it and then pulp it back down. And then also the recycling stream itself, it itself is very clean. Like, you know, newspaper recycling doesn't often get contaminated, like maybe other, you know, different types of plastic being mixed together or what have you. And in the U.S., the uh, newspaper recycling is actually a very strong um, segment of recycling that's still going, you know, good, whereas the plastic recycling that's getting shipped overseas, you know, they're having, they're really struggling. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's 
It's great that it's like this nice closed loop. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so you had this idea. Had the idea. And why what, are what, we printing yeah. the patterns on newspaper presses? Yeah, so then basically, um, like I said, it was, you know, time of my life we're all getting married. I had a baby, then I had another baby. The idea got shelved, and I thought for sure, like, somebody's going to do it. And um, long story short, after a few years, I came back to it, and I kind of told a friend of mine, Tina Fitch, uh, and I was like, I just have this idea, and it won't go away. And so she's like, why don't you take it to Startup Weekend? And so I, like, literally, like, busy mom, had a job, two little kids. I think the kids were, like, two and three or three and four years old. Mm -hmm. And flew over to Honolulu, like, on the airplane, came up with the name Rapoli. And pitched, what year was this? This was 2013. So this, was this when Dave McClure was there? Mm, or no. that was 2012? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so 2013, you pitched this in, on Oahu. Yeah. Took it to start a weekend. When it was very intimidating because I felt like everybody was really young, <laughs> so much younger than me, and like probably getting more sleep. And um, yeah, so I just pitched the idea, got my, you know, so that first night it's like all the pitches, and out of like 100 pitches, 10 were chosen. So I, mine got chosen, and then I got a little team, and we worked all weekend, and we gave the pitch and ended up winning the startup weekend. The Startup Weekend is basically two or three days. It's like a full weekend where right. the first night uh -huh. people have ideas. They pitch their ideas. Mm -hmm. And then people get to pick which idea they want to work on, right? And that's mm -hmm. the team you get. Right. And then you just crank all weekend. Everyone's like, yeah. you know, just doing whatever yeah. they're going to do to get this thing done. <laughs> and then at the end, you do your full pitch, mm -hmm. which was like five to ten minutes. Something like that, yeah. And then the judges are there. And what happened? Um... Yeah, I pitched, uh, the guy from Indiegogo was there, he was one of the panelists, and yeah, I, I, I don't know, somehow I convinced everybody that Rapoli was a great idea, and I won, I didn't win any money, but it definitely was like a shot in the arm, like, okay, this is like an idea, and people yeah. think it's cool. Yeah, and it's resonating with people. Yeah, it's yeah. resonating with people, and it was kind of like what I needed at the time to be like, no, you should pursue this. So I actually quit my job. What were you doing before? I was working at um, the, a land trust, a nonprofit land trust on, um, on Maui, yeah. So the, the startup weekend and winning and everyone being like, this is awesome, was enough for you to be like, you know what, I'm really going to make a well, go of this. Yeah, not like I didn't like go home and quit. <laughs> yeah. no, like, I am not going to work tomorrow. <laughs> right, no, no, no. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I did. It took me a while. I mean, it just, I felt... At first, I was like, I can't believe nobody's done this already. And second of all, like, yeah, I just felt maybe, like, I needed a, to build some confidence around it, too. Mm -hmm. so. I think a lot of people go through that when you've got this idea. Right. And you're debating, you know, should I keep my job or mm -hmm. go part-time? Or at what point do I make the switch? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really different for everyone. And so, right. so okay, mm -hmm. so you... you Right, so I went early in. Yeah, yeah. I started, um, I did those early press-it runs um, and you know, basically got like a prototype, I used some contacts through a friend and got some patterns. And um, I mean, really just like scrappy, like I had no idea how to even approach an artist about getting patterns or what like a surface pattern designer was. And, you know, and then like I mentioned with the iterating of the printing, like, you know, there's so many things that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, newsprint is not coated the actual the ink gets um laid down and it dries by absorbing into the paper and so if you lay too much ink it's going to be like rubbing off on your fingers when you touch it so, so it, it, it feels like newspaper like if your eyes are closed you'd mm -hmm. be like i'm reading a newspaper right yeah <laughs> yeah and um and it's two-sided it's double-sided which is really fun when you're wrapping and um well, so yeah, what is, I love about this is um, I'm really horrible about gift wrapping, and I'm also really horrible about what matches what. So <laughs> I love that you take the guesswork out of it. Right. I love what you've done with these boxes. They're kind of yeah. really cool concepts yeah. where they both kind of um, yeah, complement they, each other. Mm -hmm. They mix and match, and you can do fun stuff like with folding or the wrapping. Um, these are some from our upcoming Christmas or this season's Christmas collection. Um, but yeah, I mean, I always think it's really fun. And also, you know, especially at Christmas when we have like stacks of gifts, it's really nice when they're not all the same. So you can, you know, 
mix and match the patterns and it makes it look like there's more. Yeah. Yeah, totally right. It makes it look like there's more. <laughs> I put one shoe in one box and the other mm -hmm. shoe in the other Smart. box. <laughs> Smart. Uh, but I love like I love the Christmas ones, but I also love right. this one here which is really featuring mm -hmm. some of your collaborations with local right. artists. Can mm -hmm. you um, speak a little bit about that? I know, is this yeah. one Jana Lamb? Yes. Okay. Yes, so I, um, like I said, I didn't know how to approach artists or even what to do, but I was following Jenna early on on Instagram and somebody had given me one of her bags and I still have it to this day. I use it for every craft fair. It's my money bag. And so I just started messaging her on Instagram and we formed a, a great relationship and we've done two collections together. And um, I've really learned a lot from her. Like we've grown in the seven years we've been working together. Um, and she's, I just have tremendous respect for what she's doing. Her patterns translate so good to any sort of, I mean, obviously she does textiles, but the, the wrapping paper and paper goods. Um, and I mean, just her iconography and colors, they just speak to Hawaii and um, they're really popular. They're our best sellers, mm -hmm. so yeah. Well, we've got some of the, yeah. um, we've got some of the, other uh, gifts here and also some images of some of your other collaborations. Can you share um, which other local artists you've collaborated yeah, with? Sure. Yeah, sure. So I've, I've collaborated um, twice. This one's Jenna Lan here. Yep, that's okay. Jenna. Um, and I've also collaborated with Kayla Pico. Um, love those those ladies and they do great work. And um, another that's one the other Jenna Lan on the screen now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the shells and the monstera leaves, so popular. Um, <clears throat> The Kayala Pico, that's a Kayala Pico. Yeah, that's one oh, of theirs. So, so that's on one side of the wrapping paper, and then the green is the other side. Right. Okay. Right. I like to pair them. I mean, obviously, the, the fronts and backs are designed to go together. So um, I like to pair them. Um, yeah, that's another one. That's another Kayala Pico. Yeah. So pretty. There, I mean, it yes. just makes it look so much like a better present, you know? Right. People right. are really excited. People really like the aesthetic of Rapoli. You know, of course, like that glossy gift wrap, like that's what we've come to know um, of gift wrap. But so that's why also I think that Rapoli looks so fresh because mm -hmm. it has that sort of like more earthy. It really like feels nice to, you know, it's toothy and the paper is um, really nice to touch. Um, it has just a more modern aesthetic, I think. Um, that like uncoated, organic -y feel. People really like it. and. I get that comment even on like Amazon where we sell. We get comments um, all the time from people like, people notice my wrapping paper right away. Like my gift really stood out. You know, people tune into that. Like you can walk into a party with a gift wrap and rapidly and like people are going to comment. Yeah. So like what is, do people know like what the sustainability aspect mm, of this? Right. How does that layer on to all the other kind of, obviously it's just mm -hmm. beautiful. Right. So it's like beauty meets sustainability all packaged up into mm -hmm. one thing. But how are you really conveying that message? Well, it's an educational thing. I don't, um, I try not to be too preachy, but I do like to educate people. And I always have wanted Rapoli to stand on its own as far as like just great patterns and beautiful looking gift wrap that you'd want to use anyway, even if you did not care about the environment. But um, what I do try to do is like let people know we've designed a special little gift tag, a to and from. So when you're giving a gift, if you paid a little extra for this like really lovely sustainable wrapping paper and you're giving the gift on the to um, and from label, the gift tag, it says, you know, printed with soy based inks and recycle me and compostable. And mm -hmm. so it's just a little bit of messaging for the, you know, the end consumer of the, the wrapping paper in hopes that they'll recycle it or just appreciate that and, yeah. and learn and maybe use it. And that's that's so kind of. Um, it's so front of mind right now, mm -hmm. which I think is, is neat where you're giving this gift, but also people can feel good about right. receiving it and right. the gift giving and the whole thing just makes it that much more elevated. Right. I'd mm -hmm. love to hear more about um, the sustainability element of, of Rapoli and, and some other questions about your entrepreneurial journey after our break. Okay. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Yep. Aloha. I'm Catherine Knorr, and I'm the host of Much More on Medicine on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about medical issues, and I interview guests regarding medical matters. And I'm really excited about upcoming guests. I hope you join us every other Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha, and see you then. Aloha, I'm Jane Sawyer with the Small Business Administration and one of your hosts for Adventures in Small Business. 
a partnership with ThinkTech and with the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center, all serving small businesses in Hawaii and telling you the story about their strategies, their ideas, their drive, and the way they help Hawaii succeed and be a bright light in small business. You'll find it here every Thursday at ThinkTech. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you soon. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Melly James of Let's Mata Up, and today we have Sarah Smith, founder of Rappoli, based on Maui. Thanks, Sarah, for being with us today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So I know we were talking a little bit about sustainability and the, you said soy-based ink. Right. So what are some of the, it just seems so awesome. You've got the newspaper, it can be recycled, and mm -hmm. everyone's feeling good, but what are these other layers of, like, sustainability that you've, right. that you've put oh, into this gosh. company? So in the early days, packaging, of course. I mean, I feel like that's the Achilles heel of any product. Um, entrepreneur and I wanted to like be super eco so I was like putting them in these like brown paper bags that were 100% recycled but of course you can't like you can't see the paper if it's in a brown paper bag and then people in a retail environment were like pulling it out and the paper was getting over handled and so I quickly learned like it has to be in a clear package and everybody told me that and I really was resisting like what's the point of doing this super eco thing and then packing it in plastic mm -hmm. um, but luckily I found this uh, PLA I mean I I think it's the best option out there um, it's made of corn it's plant-based uh, it's certified biodegradable and compostable and it's clear it protects the paper and so it felt like a win like when I found this um, you know and a lot of uh, municipalities and, you know, on the mainland and stuff, especially where they're doing more industrial composting, it really makes sense. Um, for Hawaii, the industrial composting, I feel like we haven't gotten there yet. So, um, you know, it's, it will biodegrade. Um, and so that was my solution. And it feels good. Like, if, I mean, pla going plastic free is like certainly a movement. I mean, I try to do it in my life wherever possible. So, um, yeah, that was. Exciting. Awesome. It was an exciting moment to like get the new packaging. Yeah, I mean, and you can fully be fully behind yeah. the, the package. And also people can see it, so you can yeah. see kind of both sides. Yeah, so what we do is, because th this was the other challenge, like, okay, so we have this piece of paper and like uh, half of it, you know, one pattern, whole pattern folds to the inside. So how do we show people like the reversible patterns? So we just came up with this solution to drop like a swatch in on the bottom mm -hmm. um, to show the two patterns in the package so that people could see it without having to open it up and uh, see the, that's, cool. that's like the gift tags um, so. so so you got started and you're like I'm doing this quit your job started printing <laughs> in that old printing press that we saw right. earlier what happened so where where did right. sales start and, and where are you headed to next right right so I mean it was definitely I feel like I chose a slow organic growth because I, I had two little kids and I wanted to, I, I just, coming out of Startup Weekend, everybody's like, go get investments, go, you know, do this and do that and go the startup route. And I was really enamored with that and it was really exciting, but I also saw where like if I did that, you know, making it to the recital on Friday night might be really difficult. And I just, I don't think my confidence level was there, if I'm being totally honest. It was like something in me, but it was also like I didn't want my family in those early years of my kids' lives to, to suffer um, from me just being gone too much. So yeah. okay. it was a choice that I made. And I, I feel like the slow organic growth has helped me have the time to get the confidence and get the product to where I felt really good about it. Um, I felt really nervous bringing this sort of like newsprint gift wrap to market. Like, oh, you know, it's so humble, you know, a newsprint. It, it is humble, but like it's also kind of kicks ass in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like it, you know, it has all these great attributes with the recyclability. And it's very right now, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been leading up to that too. Right, yeah. So, so maybe really it was time. timing too a little bit. So where bit. did you start with? Like which, which stores? Right. Where you went first and yeah. where are you at now? Well, I got to give a shout out to um, Missy over at Owens Co. Owens & Co. right here in Chinatown. She picked me up right away and she's still like one of my best accounts and I'm so grateful to her. <laughs> and um, Takabundo also, the um, Japanese stationery store, they, um, they picked me up really early on. 
and just some small boutiques um, on Maui and um, I think, yeah, that's, okay. yeah. And yeah. now kind of leading into the Japan piece, you've been doing some work in Japan. Right, right. So um, I have, uh, let's see, I collaborated with this woman who's a professional gift wrapper. Her name is Shiho Masuda. And she's yeah. right there in the middle. In the middle, okay. Yeah, and she's a professional gift wrapper. I met her here in Honolulu, and she was actually on her way to move back to Japan. And so we met and had coffee like the day before she flew back to Japan. And she um, just loved Rappoli and started working with it. And um, in her time in Japan, was introducing it more and more to different people, and people were really resonating with it. And she was like, "Listen, I really think people are going to like this. You, you know, should bring it here." And it's just, honestly, it be, had like a life of its own. Like Rappoli just started to grow. I was working with Zbed to do like the Tokyo International Gift Show through their um, the high, step, program, yeah, yeah. high Step program. So I got to do TIGs and, you know, that's really great too because then you're in front of the buyers and you're seeing, you know, the pain points. Maybe they didn't like the packaging or, you know, this or that or the patterns. And they're giving you that feedback right at the Tokyo International Gift Show? Yeah. You know, you kind of have to get it out of them. Yeah. I mean, you and I went three years in a row, so it's also like establishing that rapport. Um, I was able to hire a staff this year. We filed, filed our trademark. Um, we're securing our distribution partners. And I'm literally, again, with that sustainability in mind, instead of exporting from the U.S. to Japan, I don't want to support conventional wrapping paper that's like printed in China and shipped to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I took my model of, you know, there's these presses all over and I took it to Japan. So basically I just replicated that whole supply chain in, um, in Japan. So I'm like printing right where the paper mill is. And um, yeah, so again, like, and then this like corn packaging is pretty unheard of there. So um, I'm right now. I'm bringing that in um, to try to again stay plastic free. It's insane the amount of plastic that it's used in daily life in Japan. I mean, they're excellent with their recycling, but yeah. yeah. So doing the corn packaging, I feel like the eco thing is really a, a niche that's like growing there. Um, this last uh, Tokyo Gift Show in September, they had a sustainability expo, and like Rapidly was featured, and it was so so exciting. People were like. It's this new trend from America, and it's really popular. And like, yeah, it's good for the world. Yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> definitely like starting to understand, and um, it's really cool that for Rapoli as a brand to be in like on the, the early days mm -hmm. or early stages of that. So um, that feels really good. But yeah, so with Shiho's help, the whole launch of Rapoli has been like, okay, so we're gonna start manufacturing there. Then we're doing these gift wrapping workshops. So that's what that picture was, a gift wrapping workshop. And mm -hmm. we're theming it like Hawaii themed gift wrapping. HIS is a um, Japan tourism group that specializes in um, travel to Hawaii. So they really love, again, like all these patterns that speak to the islands and, you know, the colors and yeah. yeah. Well, we know that obviously Japan loves Hawaii. Right. Um, not only with the tourists that do come here, but ones that are is in Japan, everyone's right. a success in Hawaii, which, which yeah. is good. Right. Uh, so kind of speaking but of But it which, doesn't mean that you're going to do good as a business yeah. owner. I mean, I think a lot of entrepreneurs think that, Just well, I'm from up. Hawaii, I'm going to show up and be like, Hawaii, and people are going to love you. Like, you really do. Like, I had to iterate all my patterns, like, scale them down, because these really big patterns that we love here in Hawaii, like, big, you know, and so they almost become ab abstracted on your clothing or on whatever. There in Japan, like, everything, it's just, like, it frazzles, it's just too much. Like they need like smaller patterns, smaller motifs. And so I've had to like rework some and it's been a really cool process, but I'm seeing the, yeah, the, the positive reaction mm -hmm. from the consumers. So it seems like you've learned some things and have iterated. Mm -hmm. um, what are some other things that you can share around your entrepreneurial journey around kind of lessons learned that you can share mm -hmm. with the audience, especially right. being a Hawaii-based, you know, mm -hmm. you're a Kamaina girl, Maui girl. Mm -hmm. Maui girl, right? Or, Maui okay. girl. <laughs> Maui girl. Um, and, like, what you've learned this just kind of doing right. business here. And I know, of course, you've been in the, you're in Mana Ups Cohort 4. Yes. Which has been awesome. a lot of fun. That <laughs> <laughs> has been fun. But, yeah, just if you could share any kind of lessons or advice yeah. to entrepreneurs here in the mm -hmm. island. Well, I think I touched on that I felt like I was doing, because I got that, you know, my foot in the door with the startup weekend, but then I chose not to go that route, and at least initially. 
then I felt like I was doing it wrong to like grow it so slow. And in the end now, looking back, I see it was just what was right for me. And mm -hmm. so especially, um, you know, maybe if you can't quit your job right away or you do have little kids, like it's okay to have that slower growth phase, especially yeah. if you're in it for the long haul. Like I wasn't never, I was never like, I'm gonna blow this up in two years and sell it, boom, you know, I, I was like- I think there's some video I mean, of your family and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah let's mm -hmm. play that while you're talking. Yeah, sure. So um, it's been really special for the kids too, like to see Rapoli grow and be a part of it. Um, uh, this is, yeah. So, um, so that slow growth was really was really important. I know you guys went on a, a trip. Yeah. So See, what? How did that? Was right. there a lot of reflection in that year, or was it just more? totally? Yeah. So when the kids uh, were born, my husband and I really wanted to. We had this vision of like taking them around the world, so that they knew that there was this whole world out there, and it's not just you know who's the best surfer or what have you. Um, this is us on the salt flats um, on the Bolivian Argentine border. Wow. Yeah, so cool. So we saved up um, for almost 10 years and took that trip. And it was really special. The kids were eight and nine when we started. And, um, and I ran rapidly from the road. And I was a little nervous. Like, I didn't tell anybody I was leaving. I just sort of was like answering emails. And if I had to get up at like two in the morning to do a phone conference, you know, I just would do it. And, um, did the whole digital nomad thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally um, coffest in um, all over the world and in an RV campers and what have you. Um, cool. So, I, so you kind of did the trip and you came back and hit the ground running, right? Yeah. So I had this epiphany. I was like, okay, I have to make moves with Rapoli and I'm going to go back and double down. I've so much work into it it's in a good spot i've kept it alive this whole year while we've been traveling and i'm gonna double down and then like literally two days after i made that decision on a bus in northern thailand i got an email like apply to mana up go hard for and i was like well okay the universe <laughs> yes thank you very much for the message i'm gonna fell off my chair <laughs> so yeah and so uh, like i said like being part of mana up cohort four has been like drinking out of a fire hose, yeah. but in the best possible way. <laughs> we've absolutely loved having you. Oh, thank you. For, and you'll be at our showcase yes. coming up, um, which you have a custom mana up uh, wrapping, wrapping paper, paper that yes. everyone, all, one of our, all of our guests will get. Yep. Um, but I want to thank you for joining me today, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks for being on Let's Mana Up. Yeah. And I'm excited to, to see all the more growth coming from uh, Rapley based on Maui. Yeah, so thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> <laughs>